Hi guys and welcome to a new episode of my quick tips and tricks for Unreal Engine 4. Let's get started. Number 15. Custom Depth Stencil Masks. With this tip, I'm going to show you how to utilize Unreal Engine in your graphic design projects, or at least how I do that. It's useful for extracting or masking out an object from a final rendered frame, like in this example. I set up lighting, materials and then exported screenshot with individual mask for each object to composite the final image in Photoshop. There is a couple of ways of doing that and I can't really tell you which is better. It really depends on what you're doing. Ok, but let's say you want to showcase or share materials you made in Unreal Engine. So you get seen with nice HDR lighting, post-process and so on. To export single frame from Unreal Engine, go to the top left hand corner of the main viewport and choose high resolution screenshot. Simply hit take screenshot button. It works pretty fast and the screenshot has been saved directly to your project folder. Click here to open it. Now let's back and let me select use custom depth as mask checkbox. The viewport gets filled with green color, but we lost our object. It's because we need to add it to the custom depth buffer first. So let's do that. Select the object and in details panel search for render custom depth path. Now if you select the checkbox again, you will see that the object stays. Take the screenshot again. The object has been masked out and you can use it in Photoshop. Another way is to use custom stencil buffer visualization. It's more useful if you got multiple objects to mask out. Let me add a box here. I'll enable render custom depth pass checkbox for the box as well. Now go to view mode, buffer visualization, custom stencil. And it's gone. To fix it, we need to change stencil value to something different than 0. 48 for this object and let's say 23 for the box. These numbers don't really matter as they are used for masks or colors generated randomly. Ok, let's change view mode again. Still an op. So now we just need to enable stencil buffer, open the console and type the following r.customdep space free. Ok, it works. You can change stencil value to get different colors. There's one problem though. If you take a new screenshot, you get these little numbers pattern as well. And it doesn't help to mask out individual objects. So let me show you a quick fix. Go back to editor and in content browser enable show engine content. Select the folder and search for stencil. We're going to get rid of these numbers by modifying post-process material. You can duplicate it if you want to keep the old one. Ok, double click on it and simply connect this multiply node directly to emissive color input. Save the material and numbers are gone. You need two screenshots where one is used for masks. And there you have it. Please notice that I didn't use translucent materials. It doesn't work with this method. I will explain how to make masks for glass or other translucent objects in another video. Number 16. High resolution screenshot anti-aliasing. As we are dealing with screenshots now, it's good moment to mention how to get rid or minimize jagged edge effect. You probably already noticed it when you took some screenshots. It looks like anti-aliasing doesn't work well with high resolution screenshot feature. Anyway, to get a better quality, simply increase size multiplier. It will obviously take more time to render, but this is the price I can pay for my smooth pixels. My rule is to use 2, 3 or even 4 as a multiplier. Higher value would be an overkill and you would barely see any difference. So, if I need full HD resolution as a final image and used 4 as the size multiplier, I need to scale the screenshot down to 25% of its original size. Thank god I paid attention to my math lessons. Ok, let's see the difference now. 
I hope YouTube compression won't kill the video quality and you can see it. But let me zoom a little bit. Yep. It's clearly a difference. Number 17. Transform along axis. There are situations where grabbing object's pivot point to move it or rotate it is not very effective. You can accidentally deselect the object or move it along different axes or even in screen space for example. If it happens to you a lot, you will find this tip useful. Select any object or objects, then press and hold down CTRL. To move it along X axis, click and drag with your left mouse button. To move it along Y axis, use right mouse button and drag. And finally, press left and right buttons together to move it in Z axis. It works regardless of Gizmo coordinate system, so you can use both world and local space. The same trick works with rotation too. Scaling, however, is a little bit different. It scales in all axes no matter what you click. Alright, that's going to it for this video. I hope you enjoyed and thanks for watching.